So let's begin our discussion of today of a pharmacology question that was asked in the Ames May 2018 exam. This is the 10th question that I'll be discussing with you today and it's the ninth video. So let's start by reading the question. The question that was asked in the Ames May 2018 in the pharmacology was a patient is given the antibiotic valinomycin, which is also a potassium ionophore. What would be the effect on the insulin secretion? Whether it would increase the secretion, decrease the secretion, there would be no effect on secretion or increase in C-peptide secretion. Now, the question expects you to know two things. First, what's an ionophore and more specifically, what's a potassium ionophore? And what would be its effect on insulin secretion? Hence, it expects you to know what's the mechanism behind secretion of insulin. So let's discuss that. So insulin secretion takes place in our body whenever glucose in blood increases. So what happens when glucose in our blood increases? Insulin is a hypoglycemic hormone. It has to decrease the glucose in the blood. So when the glucose in the blood increases, for example, after a meal, the glucose increases, the glucose is transported by the GLUT2 receptors into the beta cells of pancreas. These are the GLUT2 receptors and they transport the glucose that has increased in the bloodstream into the beta cells of pancreas via the GLUT2 receptors. Now this glucose enters respiration uh, and glycolysis. This respiration and glycolysis results in formation of ATP. This ATP production, what this ATP production does is that since there is an increase in ATP production, this ATP production inhibits. This ATP production inhibits the potassium channels. Inhibition of the potassium channel results in an increased potassium inside the cell. Inside the cell, the potassium increases. Now, whenever the positive charge or a positive ion in the cell increases, this results in depolarization of the cell. So, when potassium increases, this causes depolarization. And what this depolarization instead in does is that it stimulates voltage-gated potassium channels. It stimulates voltage-gated calcium channels. There's an influx of calcium and this calcium influx causes the release of stored insulin in the vesicles and hence there's an exocytosis of stored insulin. So this is the mechanism why how increased glucose causes an increased secretion of insulin. The glucose enters into the beta cell via the GLUT2 receptors it takes part in respiration and hence ATP is formed. ATP production inhibits potassium channels. This causes depol this causes depolarization of the cell. Depolarization of the cells causes an increased calcium influx via the voltage gated calcium channels, and this in turn causes the exercise of the st stored insulin. Now let's discuss what's an ino four. Now ino four. It's there in the name itself. Iron and four or a pore. Ionophores were first described for the mitochondrial membrane. If you remember from your basic biochemistry, this is a mitochondria. And during the electron transport chain, what happens is the hydrogen ion is getting pumped out into the intermembranous space. Into the intermembranous space, the hydrogen ions used to get pumped out and this used to create a proton gradient. What an ionophore does is that, that the ions, which normally cannot move across, normally this is a cell membrane or any lipid membrane, the ions, they cannot move across the membrane along their chemical electrochemical gradient because of the imp impermeability of the ions. I, what ionophore does is, it creates a permeable channel in that membrane and causes these ions to move about extremely freely. Hence, this electrochemical gradient that's there between the membrane, that this pair, here, the ions are more or here, the ions are less. There is less H+, plus or there is more H+, plus. this gets totally abolished. And that was a question that was asked in PGI in 2007, that ionophores have all the following action except they abolish a proton gradient. Yes, ionophore 
create pores in the membrane that abolish any form of iron gradient for which the iron is specific. They were first described for mitochondria, hence the ions that were discussed were H plus ion or the proton ion, the protons essentially. So they abolish the H plus gradient exactly. They abolish the uh, H plus gradient. Now abolition of H plus gradient will obviously result in abolition of the pH gradient. Now, from what we know about biochemistry, that electron transport chain and this proton gradient was responsible for formation of ATP via the chemosmotic theory. Now, if the, there is an abolition of the proton gradient, there won't be formation of ATP. Hence, there is an inhibition of ATP to ADP gradient or there is an inhibition of ADP to ATP formation also. So, these three statements are correct statements. It abolishes an H plus gradient or a proton gradient which results in abolition of a pH gradient and that in, in turn inhibits ADP to ATP formation. So this hydrophilic in nature is our correct answer. And as you can see, ionophores have to be lipophilic, not hydrophilic. They're rather a hydrophobic in nature because they form pore in the lipid soluble membrane and cause the ion to move out in and out very freely, thus abolishing the gradient. Right? Hence, they are not, they are not hydrophilic in nature. They are lipophilic in nature. Having discussed what's an ionophore and having discussed the mechanism of action of secretion of insulin, it's very easy to discuss how would a potassium ionophore affect insulin secretion. What would happen is that, that earlier there was an inhibition of this potassium outflow by ATP. ATP used to inhibit this potassium outflow. Now, since there is an ionophore that is present, the entire potassium gradient that was established will be abolished. Hence, there will be no depolarization. No depolarization will take place. If there is no depolarization, no calcium influx, this calcium influx is going to also take place and this in turn will result in decrease of secretion. And that is the answer to this question. The question that asked what will be the effect of valinomycin, which is a potassium ionophore on insulin secretion, the answer would be decrease the secretion because a potassium ionophore will abolish all the gradient, it will abolish the K plus gradient, it won't allow depolarization to take place and since depolarization won't take place, there won't be any calcium release. I'm sorry, there won't be any calcium influx and hence there won't be any insulin release and this decrease the secretion is an answer to question. A similar question actually was asked in Ames May 2011 about a drug called diazoxide. Now diazoxide is a drug which causes the potassium channel opening instead of closing. Now if potassium channel is open, more potassium will flow out. This will result in hyperpolarization instead of depolarization and hyperpolarization in turn will decrease insulin secretion. Since there will be a decrease in insulin secretion, there will be an hyperglycemia or increased glucose level. Now let's discuss the question that was asked, which of the following statement of dioxide is false. It acts by causing prolonged opening of the potassium channel. Yes, that's the mechanism of action of dioxide. It opens the potassium channels. Since it opens the potassium channel, depolarization does not take place, rather hyperpolarization takes place. And since hyperpolarization takes place, insulin secretion is decreased, which causes hyperglycemia. The second option was it can cause severe hypoglycemia. This is a false statement. No, this is not the true statement. This is a false statement. And hence, it's the answer to this question. It causes hyperglycemia. It can be used to treat patients with insulinoma. Yes, that's true. In cases where insulin secretion is increased as in insulinoma, we can give drugs like diazoxide because as you can see, since it will open up the potassium channel, it will cause repol it will cause hyperpolarization and won't allow or decrease insulin secretion and hence it can be given in insulinoma. Hence, this video underlies the importance of doing previous year question. We, we, we might think that this question this was that what was asked in this Ames May 2018 exam is a new question. However, it has been previously asked in other examination, albeit in a really different form. But in both the examination, what the examiner was focusing on, what would be the effect on insulin secretion and how insulin secretion, what's the mechanism of mechanism by which insulin gets secreted. So that becomes a very important topic for a PG entrance examination. A similar question can be framed in other examination with the drug being different. So it's better to prepare that. Thank you. Hi, so I hope you guys enjoyed my video. 
Please subscribe to my channel if you want such further updates on the AIMS May 2018 paper. I'll be discussing one or two questions of the paper every day. Share it with your friends who you think might benefit from these videos. So thank you and have a nice day.